this is the first video where we're going to be looking at uh, trigonometry. Uh, this first video we're going to go through some revision from previous year's stuff, the, the things that you have to know to really get started into all of this stuff here. So in the next videos we're going to be talking about graphs, exact values of trig functions, uh, solving equations, and proving identities. But for this first introductory video we're going to be looking at the stuff the revision stuff, the stuff that you need to know. So first up, Pythagoras' theorem. So solving right angle triangles and finding sides given two sides in the triangle. So you can see these first examples. One of them, we don't know the hypotenuse. That's the longer side. One of them, we don't know one of the shorter sides. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So in each case, we use Pythagoras here and we get those two answers. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this stuff because these are things that you should have been doing for a number of years. Second basic skill that you need to have is to solve right angle triangles finding lengths or angles using Sokatoa. That's how I remembered it at school. Uh, sine, cos and tan, what those trig ratios actually are. So sine standing for opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse and tan opposite over adjacent. So you need to know how to label the sides of a right angle triangle given a certain angle. And also we recognize, we see down here that tan is actually sine over cos. It's one of the identities that we're going to start using later on. So here's two right angle triangles to solve. In the first one we have to find the length of A. In the second one we have to find the size of the angle. So in the first one we've just got to choose the right identity. In relation to this angle we've got the opposite and a hypotenuse. So O and H means that we've got to be using the sine. The sine of 40 here. Sine of 40 equals A over 16. Over here we've got the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side. O and A means we're going to be using tan for this one here. Tan of theta equals 3.5 divided by 4.8. There's your first steps and you can solve from there, getting those two answers. Second part of this revision is knowing the sine rule and cosine rule for non-right angle triangles. These formulas are not given to you, so you need to know them. And you need to know when these formulas can be applied. So we've got a few examples firstly for the sine rule. You can see in these two triangles we've got two angles and a side trying to find the other side. The sine rule when we're trying to find a side I write it like this with the sides, little a on the top and the angles on the bottom. <clears throat> so a is the side corresponding to angle a so it's opposite a. Little b is the side opposite angle B and little c is the length of the side opposite angle C. So A over sine A equals B over sine 28 equals 12 over sine 42. Now you can see in this one here we don't need A over sine A, that's not part of the calculation. But from this we can get B by multiplying both sides by sine 28, giving us the answer. In this second example we're asked to find an angle. When I'm asked to find an angle, given two sides and an angle, I flip those the sine rule around so I put the angles at the top. So sine 39 over 4.2 equals sine of theta over 3.5 equals sine of c over little c over here. I'm not going to need this one here. Okay, a little bit trickier here. Multiplying both sides by 3.5 gives me this. This is sine of the angle, so to get the actual angle we need to go shift sine on our calculator. And there it is to one decimal place. So there's two examples of using the sine rule. Okay, here's two triangles that we can solve using the cosine rule. First one is a very specific example of the cosine rule, where we have two sides and the angle in between and we're asked to find the opposite side, opposite the angle. You can't use the sine rule here. A over sine 25 equals 17 over sine C, which we don't have, which equals 15 over sine B, which we don't have. The sine rule fails here. So we need this other formula for the cosine rule. Over here, we've got a triangle where we're given all three sides. 
and we need to find the angle or any one of those angles and that's also another case of where you use the cosine rule. This is the only two cases. Given three sides trying to find an angle or given two sides and the angle in between trying to find the opposite side. Okay, so let's look at the answers for both of these. For the first one here's the formula. Uh, so b squared plus c squared, basically it's these two sides we're dealing with. 15 squared plus 17 squared minus 2 times 15 times 17 times cos 25. Notice that that's a squared, so you need to square root the last step to get your answer. And for finding the angles, it is uh, this squared plus this squared minus this squared divided by 2 times this times this. So I always remember this one, we're talking about the two sides, either side of the angle that we want, minus off the opposite side squared. That's how I remember how to do the top line here. So if I was trying to find angle B, my formula would be 6.5 squared plus 7.2 squared minus 9.6 squared divided by 2 times 6.5 times 7.2. And also in this one here, this value gives you cos of the angle, so you have to go shift cos to get the angle at the last step. So there's two examples using the cosine rule. Third area of revision is the area of a triangle formula half a b sine c. So kind of like the cosine rule we just looked at, we're talking about the two sides and the angle in between. So the area of this triangle here is a half 18.1 times 24.3 times sine of 29. We don't need the length of this side over here. So the two sides and the angle in between are the ones involved in this formula here for the area of a triangle. Similar triangles are very, very, very handy. Uh, when we do calculus problems and all kinds of things. So what you need to understand here is that the ratio of the lengths of the sides are the same in similar triangles. So BC divided by AC, that ratio, is the same as ED over AD. And hopefully you can see that. Even if we have a tiny small triangle, the ratio of that length to that length is always the same. It's kind of like when you do trig identities for the first time when you look at your your first ones of basically what the definition of tan is. Tan is just that length divided by that length. And if you've got a constant angle, that ratio is always going to be the same. So let's look at this example. In these triangles, triangle ONM, the bigger one, is similar to OQP, that smaller triangle. Similar means they have the same shape. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that x divided by 6, that ratio, that length to that length, is the same as the ratio x plus 3 divided by 8. Okay. So there's that ratio. Multiply both sides by 24 gives me the next step to get rid of the fractions. Span out the brackets, subtract 3x, and it gives me x equals 9 centimeters. So there's your basic revision on the things that you have to know for trigonometry to get started here.